going on we're having oh, we're on. technical difficulties <laughs> we might have to start over nice intro. <laughs> <Just> a, <laughs> yeah it is but it I, I always feel bad for poor know. darcy because the last thing we see is her face gets mad. yeah yeah i was gonna say <laughs> i was like oh i know who that is <laughs> well well the facebook says we're live we are um we are live um Technical difficulties. I am frozen. You want my husband to check? <laughs> I look like I'm frozen. All right. I don't know. I don't know. We're gonna try to go with this, and hopefully, we don't have to like start over. <laughs> oh, I God. wonder if he can. I promise, we are not very professional, but we're more professional than what we look like here. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> I tried to cl close some of these. Do you want windows. my husband to check and see if you guys are live? Are. What's that? No, it says I'm live on Facebook. I'm looking. <laughs> But um, we have a comment here, so if somebody's commenting something. Let's see if I can get. Them oh, out. there we go. Uh, oh, Thomas Christie says hi, Lauren. Hey, Thomas. Yeah, I, pr I promise. Oh, hi, Tom. This That's my chum in Baltimore. What's that? <laughs> That's my chum in Baltimore. Oh, nice. Right on. Okay. So everything seems like it's working the way it's supposed to now. The internet thing is better. I got to get a cord ran down here so that way I could just hook up directly to the internet. We haven't had never had this many problems, but yeah. Well, you know what? I usually have horrible internet too because I'm in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. So, it, it, yeah, I usually, I always have a lot of problems when I do Zooms and everything. It just cuts in and out. And I'm just like, I, I live in the woods. What can I say? Me of all people live in. In the woods. I'm, so, I'm surprised though because still in the east coast you'd think you know everything would be smooth but yeah. no not up here uh. <laughs> what, what, what city do you live in if you don't mind saying if you don't want to say don't say i live about an hour northwest of new york city near okay. a beautiful area called bear mountain oh nice that sounds Harris like Harris. a place where they don't do internet <laughs> <laughs> yeah they don't do but they do a lot of bears man i'll tell you a lot of bears awesome okay well sounds first like off i want to go ahead setting of a horror movie actually <laughs> yeah yeah it, it is pretty creepy because i do trail running and mm -hmm. oh, some I, I actually i never listen to anything because i want to hear what's out there in the woods because you know horror movies yeah. you know and uh one day i was i was running and i didn't have anything on and i'm going up this hill this rocky little hill and i hear rustling to the left of me and it's a mother with two baby cubs oh, sweet. and i'm just like ah! <laughs> like the cartoons you know where your legs start going really fast <laughs> <laughs> well right on we got uh karen says hi guys and welcome lauren and uh Bobby Heckman from um, Victim No More, who's got a sequel in the works right now. Yes. He'll be sharing his uh, GoFundMe or Indiegogo when he when he starts doing that. He says, everything seems to be working fine right now. No one is frozen. <laughs> Great to see you all. Okay. Well, first of all, like I said, I want to I thank you so much for taking the time to come out. Um, yeah. But while we were talking last week, we were supposed to have you on last week, the coolest thing happened is as you were messaging me that you couldn't make it, I had talked to um, Kevin Van Hittenreck from um, Basket Case a while ago about being on the show. I've wanted to get him on forever. And oh, wow. He, he literally messaged me, like, I'm reading your message and responding to you, and the, the notification comes over yours on my phone. It's like, I would love to do this show. And I text him back, hey, well, how about tonight? <laughs> <laughs> and he was able it? to do it, and it went really oh, good. Oh, good, good. So that, that was awesome. So yeah, I know we it, had tried to uh, try to do this way back when, and things got a lot, a lot just got crazy around here. So yeah. then, when we organized that date, I thought, you know, back when we made that date, I thought, oh, yeah. it would be okay. But then, 
you know, life happened and life you know, happens. But I'm glad to be here today. Even though my husband's making dinner, he said 45 minutes and that's it. I said, <laughs> okay, <laughs> right on. We'll, we will get you out of here before then for sure. So, um, today happens to be Jason Voorhees' birthday. That's you know what? That's why the stars align Great. in a weird way. <laughs> When I yeah. saw that, and I'm getting messages from a lot of uh, a lot of people, Tom, of course, is one of them. Anthony Watt out, you know, in the middle of the country, there sent me a bunch of people sent me messages and like, "Happy birthday, Jason Voorhees!" And I was like, "Wait, what? Today? I would have thought he would have been born on a Friday the 13th." Well, he was born on June 13th, but it wasn't a Friday. It was June, June, the 19, the 80 movie took place on Friday the 13th. Ah. But his birthday is June 13th, 1946. Right, because Betsy's like, and today was his birthday. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. I haven't seen Part One for a while. Yeah, the original. It plays in 1980 and not 79 when it was filmed. Yet I argue with a bunch of people about that. And it's just yeah, been a big people. bone of contention. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people get very contentious about, about people. stuff. People get serious about their uh, Friday the 13th. Oh, yes. <laughs> you bet we do. <laughs> it is serious business, after all. It is. And if you don't believe that, just ask Victor Miller how serious it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, whose dog is barking? Because I know it's not mine this time. Do you have a dog barking? Okay, yeah, I was going to say, I, ah. I have a husky. She doesn't bark. No, she doesn't. That's nice. I, I have a cat scratching at the door with his paw going underneath. I, I would but trade you know, all the stuff she does do for her barking, though, because they're the worst <laughs> dogs ever. They are, they're horrible. Horrible uh, dogs. See, I got a border collie, man. I got mm -hmm. I got the smart guy. I got three Thomas Christy says you gotta ask her about the brown undies. That will definitely happen <laughs> later. Oh, you know, I usually have them handy. But I wanna <laughs> maybe if you do a clip or something, I'll leave. But if you don't, I usually have them handy, but they're in the other in the other it's room. Okay. <laughs> My husband and I were playing with them the other night. No one just nice. kidding. <laughs> Lucky guy. <laughs> <laughs> so um me and Ryan, we, we went and checked out your new film, oh. um, In a Violent Nature, which we have on the background there. We can't see it, but maybe, yeah, that's what that is in the background. And um, it was definitely different, man. It was I, I really liked a lot about it. I didn't like everything about it. I can't lie Thanks. to you. My favorite thing about it, though, and not just saying because you were here, because you could check our review from last week. I think I brought it up on there. Um, was, was you at the end? I thought you were the best actress in the film. And oh, I, I thank you. Close. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it, it's so weird to go back onto the screen after all these years. You know, I mean, I've done a couple of, you know, short indie type of things and whatnot. Uh, but to see yourself in a movie theater mm -hmm. for the first time in many, many years, except when you would go to like the Mahoning Drive-In Theater for screenings and, you know, special events like the Colonial Theater, um, you know, it, 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 it at, but to see yourself at this age, you know, I'm so used to seeing young Lauren, but to see myself as a 60 something year old Lauren, I'm like, okay, I'm okay with this. Okay. Because all I could think of was Chris Nash, the director, didn't have me wear any makeup. So mm -hmm. there was no hiding of the dark circles that I've had since I was like born. You know, <laughs> there was no hiding of anything. And I just was like, I don't, you know, I don't do any of that plastic surgery or Botox or lips or anything. So it's right. like, this is what my husband looks at every day. Oh, the poor guy. Oh, whatever. <laughs> okay. I, I muted because of the dogs barking, but you got to stop that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No, I, I do appreciate your thoughts. I've actually re read a review that um, a Canadian friend of mine sent to me. Um, and I was just like, oh, wow, that's cool. So yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. I'm glad. I, I see. Go ahead, Ryan. Rick, I'm glad you brought up uh, this film first because I actually would like to start current and work back. How did how did it even come about? Who approached you about doing this? It was it it was a bizarre set of circumstances. Um, he's a big the director is a big fan, of course, of horror. I mean, if you're going to be a horror director, you're going to be a big fan of horror. And he originally went to a different actress for the role, and she couldn't do it for a couple of different reasons. So they were like, well, you know, they spoke to my representative and he said, well, is she still acting? And she said, you know, well, yeah, sometimes, you know, she's done some commercials throughout the years and she just did a little indie, a, you know, an indie film. And then um, uh, she said, but she was on a soap opera for 12 years. 
So judging by the amount of dialogue, four pages of almost a monologue, because she, she looked at the script first before even asking, you know, about it, you know, to me, asking me about it. She said, I'm pretty sure that muscle is pretty good. And plus I'd been doing stage work. I'd been doing musicals. And then I was all, you know, recently in my community. And I was also director of a, of a theater group. So I've been around scripts, you know, my entire life. And when you direct a show, you know the entire show. You know everybody's lines, just in case you have to yell it out from the side, <laughs> you know, from the side of the uh, of the stage. So that muscle was still working, and she knew that. So she, you know, translated that to him. We did a Zoom call. I did a cold reading, and the rest is history. I got very, very lucky that this film, and I, I had no idea that it was going to be released you know, on the big screen when Chris Nash called and said, uh, by the way, it's not set in stone, but we're one of the finalists to go to Sundance. I went, nice. Sundance? What? Yeah. What? Big deal. Yeah. Well, the big movie's getting deal. great scores, especially with critics. I mean, it's like 90% on Rotten Tomatoes with critics. So it's doing really well. I see that you took your family to the premiere, the friends and family. Like, <laughs> how did they like that? Oh, my God. Well, the other two, I will not name names in case they're watching. But <laughs> two of my my two closest of the females in the group, they sat. One had to leave and come back, and I had to text her and say, "Okay, it's safe now." <laughs> and then the other one was like this. <laughs> it was so funny, uh, but the guys loved it, of course. Um, what was weird was that, and this is this is kind of funny. I've had this friend group for 30 years now, right? Over 30 years. And they kind of know me as, you know, oh, Lauren, you know? And the, the whole subject of being an actor never comes up in this group. Mm -hmm. So when our friend Jeremy, um, Jeremy Wall, um, he, he, we were at an event where he was playing the piano. At the end, he said, hey, everybody, the New York Times made it its weekly, the critics, critics, pick for this week you should go see lauren she got a movie coming out in a violent nature and open today a couple of the two of the friends that are in that picture went we already have tickets for that i went <laughs> I said, okay i'll go with you and then another couple said i'll go with you i'll go with you and by the end it was a party and then we were having margaritas and chilies afterwards <laughs> awesome. yeah look like you guys had a good time yeah it's always sure. It's always good to have long-standing friend groups like that. Rick and I have known each other 27 years now. Yeah, for so, sure. Um, you guys, you're that old? Yeah, we're that old. Well, <laughs> I was born He's the younger. year that part one came out. So. Oh, wow. Okay. Rick's older, okay. though. Yeah, I was born in the 70s. <laughs> I'm the baby. Um, but no, I wanted to ask, since you brought it up, uh, four-page like monologue, even though you don't appear until towards the end of the film, I feel like you have the most lines in the film. Absolutely. Yeah. Without a yeah. doubt. So yeah, in a I way, don't... so in yeah. a, in your own way, you're the lead. Right. In, 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 a, in a way, I, I, I guess, I mean, you know, her job, you know, the job in the movie is to wrap it all up for the audience mm -hmm. um, and how, you know, brutal, you know, stuff happens. I don't want to yeah. say the real words. I don't want to curse, but it happens. Oh, you can, you know? by the way. If you, if you feel <laughs> oh, like it, then go ahead. It's... Don't get me started. I'm a native New Yorker. Once I get started, <laughs> I, you know, I'll sound like Samuel L. Jackson, okay? We do a lot better with the swearing than we did when we first started this. And we, we were trying to get um, uh, Ron Milky to come on with this, right? Oh. And he agreed to it at first. He's at good. first, right? Yeah. And then, like, we, we didn't know anything about recording stuff right, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So he's seen one of our first podcasts, and I swore, like, every other word. And he, he sent me an email, long-ass email, him. chastising me about the way I talk. Really? <laughs> he, he told, in a nice he, way, in the nicest yeah. possible way. He you scolded know, he really both nice of them. I just laughed because it reminded me of the Eddie Murphy Raw where, yeah. where he was getting chastised by Bill Cosby. <laughs> <He's still> <laughs> he, yeah. He scolded okay. both of us. He scolded me for not uh, ranking Adrian King higher on my final girl list. And he scolded that's the Rick episode for... you listened to that was and the he... final girl episode. Yeah. And he scolded Rick for cussing too much. <laughs> <laughs> but did he so, come on? No. He didn't. That's why that's the thing, because I swore too much. So I tried to send him like I had um 
Wow. The first, like, I guess most more professional one I had was with um, Adam Marcus came on. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't think I said a swear word in the whole thing. So I was like, okay. I sent him that again. Like, hey, you know, like, we're better than that we were then. That was, you know, six months ago. But, you know, if you see the newer yeah. shows, we're better. And I sent him that as an example. Never heard back from him. So maybe, maybe someday. Well, but uh, well, I assured him. Any- I was like, if we have you on, dude, we won't we won't talk like that. I promise. Watch <laughs> any podcast that's been around a year, though. Listen to their first episode and listen to their more recent. Absolutely. You know? Yeah, Absolutely. yeah we, we, we're bad. I, I, we're a lot better. I think we're better now. I don't know if we're good yet. But we don't strive to be good. We strive to be mediocre here. And I think, we, I think we've nailed that. I think, aside from the technical difficulties in the beginning of today. But that's not part of being mediocre, is to have technical difficulties. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so in, in this film, I don't want to get into too many spoilers. I'm not going to, but yeah, you didn't die. You didn't die. You're in a couple of horror movies everybody. <laughs> so I was so glad that you didn't. I was so but, glad, too. Yeah. I was you supposed are, to be a final girl, and I'm finally a final girl. That's what I was getting to. That's yeah. what I was getting yeah. to. So are you a final girl now? You're always the not the final girl. The You're our favorite not the final girl. Uh-oh, you got to rename that thing girl. now. I know. The final, <laughs> the final woman. Uh, that's, yeah, because that's you're credited as the woman in the film. Yes. Yeah. Yep. I'm very mysterious. <laughs> My identity is mysterious. Yeah. All right. Got a couple comments Same. I want to hit real quick burn through these real quick um should i even i should probably should not have tried to put it on the screen <laughs> I like it. The internet's working. so um charles sherrod of the die podcast which goes live at nine tonight or eight tonight eight tonight i'm sorry eight tonight right after we wrap up he's got his big anniversary show he's been on on, on for a year now and he says sorry he's late anniversary show tonight big fan of lauren would love to have you on his show sometime Oh, um, sweet. Thanks. Jared Haggerty for Halloween Haunts 365 says, hi, guys. Hi, Lauren. Um, hi. Sh- Shannon, um, Leah says, uh, you, you are very pretty, Lauren. Oh. We were talking about how you, uh, with the makeup oh, and whatnot. Oh, thank you. But, uh, yeah, yeah. So, do, 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 do. Yeah, I mean, I don't usually wear makeup anyway. Even when I um, go and go out and about with people, you know, the most I'll throw on is lipstick, you know? <laughs> You know, my under eye circles, they're just going to get darker with mascara, you know, and everything else is just like, whatever. <laughs> right on. So, uh, do, 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 do. what is like the weirdest convention story? You do a lot of conventions. And we've met you at a couple conventions. What's your weirdest convention story or maybe like the weirdest thing you've ever signed at a convention? Well, of course, I have signed a couple of brown undies. <laughs> and that's always very uh strange yeah because <laughs> they're hard to sign i mean that that's uh, the brown onions are definitely the weirdest thing i've, I've ever signed because you, right. you got to go through a lot to get them you know you got to go on ebay one of those stores from overseas usually has the ugliest brown un- undies and stuff like that you gotta wait for them to come and then you got to bring them to the convention and then you've got to if if you know then it's like well how do how does somebody put that up on their wall? And it's like, okay, you get a shadow box, you put the picture <laughs> behind it, you put the undies in the shadow box. Yeah. And it, it 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 works, but it is a funny thing to sign. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the seventies, the, the, the late seventies was a weird time, man. Brown lingerie being considered appealing is just wild. yeah. I mean, that's why I just I never understood. I mean, I get it now, I guess, but I never understood just the super super like negative connotations towards that i guess i saw it so young and it was like a product of the time that it never really struck yeah. me you know yeah i, yeah, I think, think it was got them at woolworths or walmart mm-hmm. <laughs> five and ten. Oh wow i remember, yeah, I remember that yeah, Kroger. <laughs> <laughs> so um i'm a big fan of your podcast and not the final girl podcast um, oh, thanks. Are you um are you recording new episodes soon or? Um, I'm kind of on um, a little bit of a holding pattern. Okay. I've taken care of my mother for the past two years, and the past year yeah. has been extremely difficult. And she she just passed away last month. I'm so I'm um, thank you. So yeah, there's a lot that. that my brother and I have to have to do, and it's. It's kind of, I don't know why my dogs are, now my dogs are barking and I Is don't it your know dogs why. or his I'm dogs? We'll, we'll get through. We're, we're, we're yeah. just stuffing it out, man. That's the pistol mix. That's <laughs> not the border collie. <laughs> That's the watchdog. 
so anyway, so hopefully I'll get I'll get back to to it. But there's just a lot to do with her apartment, and you know, it's just a lot. Yeah, that's all. Do you do, do, you do all I, this? I can appreciate it. Do you do all the stuff on the podcast yourself, like the editing yep. and all that good yep. stuff? Yep. Yeah. See, I don't even know how to do that yeah. stuff. Maybe you can give Maybe you can give Rick some lessons. <laughs> well, I had a couple of good teachers. I have I, my husband, of course, had a, a recording studio for many years. But then my friend Robbie Vegas up in Buffalo, he has a podcast called All Bets Are Off, mm -hmm. and he interviews like a lot of wrestlers and horror uh, people uh, um, too. And he introduced me to the program that I use, which is perfect for me because it's very user friendly mm -hmm. so that was very nice of him to like walk me to like do a whole tutorial but it, it is it's it you know it's time consuming to do everything yeah what is the what what, what program do you use i you know what i haven't been on it for six months so i i forgot okay cool well, we'll i'll terrible? message you later and we'll figure that out because oh it might be able to help me out <laughs> <laughs> right on now so, you got me um, wondering what what do I use? Now I gotta look on my computer and see. <laughs> no, because I don't want to go away from us. Because if I go, no, away that, from the, us, the, the, how bad this is. connection? <laughs> <laughs> then we'll be more less than mediocre on this. <laughs> yeah, we, don't, we don't want that. We don't want that for sure. Oh, it's called Audacity. Oh, I know Audacity. That. Okay, cool. Gosh. We'll look into that. I think somebody so else tried to get me to do it too. I know. I did. I told you about Audacity a long time ago. Okay. When I did the uh, bellicosity thing, I actually recorded my vocals remotely through that program and sent them to the engineer. Oh, cool. Yeah, R Ryan used to be a singer in a death metal band. <laughs> oh, I love it. You love death metal? Or you love the fact no, that he was a singer? I went to a death metal festival last year down in the, in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. The I see some pictures of you and some death metal chicks. Yeah, that was at that, at that gig. Yeah, it was a two-day thing in two different venues and it was lo a lot of fun yeah got to meet the ladies from castrator that's mm. fun <laughs> castrator right on that's yeah but ryan's band's i'm a big metal head but ryan's band is the only like death metal band i've ever really messed with so i'm not familiar if i'm familiar with anything it's from talking to him you know i never really listened <laughs> to too much of that yeah. it, it's something else it's a it's a talent to be able to absolutely do that type of music and not lose your voice number one or get with well, yeah, your voice has to be trained. I know a lot of people that wouldn't mind if I lost my voice. So, <laughs> <laughs> and they're mostly at my job. Um, <laughs> so, um, I've heard that you, you know, speaking of screaming and death metal music, your scream is one of the most legendary screams. In a, by the way, my kid, you screamed in his ear, did a little video of it for your thing, and he said uh, today when I told him we were watching um, Pretty Face, which we'll get into later. I was showing him that, that you're in that. Oh, yeah. And, and um, he goes, oh, yeah, I remember her. She screamed in my ear. My, I still can't hear out of my ear. Make sure you tell her that. <laughs> <laughs> he got me I'm in Blair. Sorry. She got me in Blairstown, too, when we did the uh, cosplay thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was part four, Jason. That's always my cause. My tech yeah, white was is four, my I was five. Or I was yeah. three and Ricky was five. No, I was five and Ricky was three. I, yeah, that's the way we did it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> he so, got to keep track of those things. So I'm going around. <laughs> and then uh, Stefan, who we know, was mm -hmm. dressed as, you know. Yes, yes, yes. Mama Voorhees. So yes. I'm like just giving everybody the stare. And then I stop and fall to my knees and hug him. And I keep walking around and I see Lauren in the crowd and I stop and I just give her the look and you gave me like the most, I was not ready for you to do it. And you're like, nah, nah. I'm like, oh. it's it was perfect. It was perfect. So, but, but my question was though, that I I heard that you have, they've substituted your scream out for other people in other films. Yeah. Can you give us any idea of any of what those films were? Oh gosh, I don't want to call anybody out. Um, Ooh. one of them was one of the Halloween movies. Okay, cool. I didn't Another know that. Another one was uh, Prom Night. Okay. Um, oh. what was the other one? Um, there was an, there was another one, another couple, another couple actually. Yeah, yeah. Wow, Rick's taught me something. I actually didn't know that. Deal. I, I, I knew my yeah. homework. Sometimes, yeah, I lost but... my I lost my voice <laughs> doing it. <laughs> I can see why it was. It actually, it, I got a little goosebump when you uh, screamed about two feet in front of me. Yeah, we're gonna so. have to, we're gonna have to try to try to watch a couple of those films and see if we could find her. I'm I'm the one dressed as Jason, and she's the one that sent shivers up my spine. <laughs> so. 
You got, you know, you got to do it. I love doing it. It's, it's, I love shocking people. You like did. That. The it's, whole crowd around fun. you was not expecting that either. It was a big group and you just did it. <laughs> it was like, whoa. I've done it in the back of a movie theater while watching with, uh, with people. Like when we were at the Colonial, I screamed along with my scream. And the fans were like, ah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. See, Charles brings it up. I'm going to try again to bring this on the screen. Let's see. Oh, we're good this time. See, Lauren yeah. was the first to be killed by Jason after his body is revealed. The classic mm -hmm. night slowly approaching the victim. See, that brings me to a question I had here. There was five people to play Jason in part two. Yep. And the one yep. that killed you, if I'm not mistaken, was Carl Fullerton. Am I right? No, it was, it was, uh, um, oh, Jerry, Jerry Wallace. Jerry Wallace killed me. Yeah. Okay. Right and on. he dragged me down the stairs. I have a picture of him dragging me down the stairs, but his, <laughs> his, his head is cut off. That sounds horrible, but you can't really see his face. But yeah, it was, it was him. Yeah. I have an autograph from everyone that's played Jason, except for about four, four or five people, three of which were in that film. Mm -hmm. Ellen Luter, Jerry Wallace, and Carl Fullerton. I need all three of those. Do you have do you have any contact information for either one of those and especially Ellen Luter? Ellen Luter. No, I don't. I do not know. <laughs> Nobody does. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we got to get these guys doing cons. Yeah, I have everyone. I have everybody. I don't have Brooker. Brooker is one of the hardest ones to get because he passed. And um, right. people, and if you want to buy a signature now, even on an eight by ten, it's like three hundred bucks. Wow. And one of these days, I will break down and get one. But yeah. I have um. All stunt, stunt guys, all the main guys. I'm missing, I think I think it's six that I'm missing. The, it might be six. For, That's kind for, of the young Jasons, too. For Rick's yeah, birthday, yeah. for Rick's birthday this past year, and he doesn't even know this. So I'm telling a new story now. Yeah. Um, I actually tried to track down Ellen Luter for him. Okay. And I got awesome. I got a, I got a couple of good leads, <laughs> but it's and oddly enough, she works behind the scenes now for like Adam Sandler's like camp. Oh, oh wow. wow. Right. So <laughs> not the, I the don't only know female to ever play it's just his feet in the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she's still wow. working in uh motion pictures and is now big time in it with like that group. So oh, I have no cool. I have no leads or connections with yeah, those yeah. people. So yeah. I struck so, out. Um, <laughs> so um you did five hundred and five episodes of loving the soap opera, loving. Oh, at least. At Only least. Least. <laughs> That's IMDb. This is what they say. Only two actors did more in the 12 years. So you're like, I mean, that was like your show, huh? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I was on it from uh, from day one until the day they transitioned it to a different, you know, the city it was called. Okay. Yeah, it was fun. It, 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 it was fun. I didn't get to scream a whole lot on that one, though. When they killed no. me, I just kind of went to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> you worked with a lot of um a lot of uh big actors, you know, though that, that you know came out and did um like yeah, Edie Falco from The Sopranos was on there. Ron Carroll from Friday the 13th Part One was on there. Um Luke Perry, of course. Um yeah. Donald Trump's baby's mama, Marla Melt Maples. Uh, oh, yeah. Brian Cranston. Brian Cranston. See, there's a reason <laughs> why there, there's a reason why I was waiting to bring him up. Because as you can see, he is tattooed on, on, on Ryan's arm there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Somewhere. Somewhere. He, was your he was your brother in the show, right? Yeah, yeah. Seen some people that were in the comments earlier that, that I, I thought might have watched it, but I don't think they're still here. I think we waited too long to get to it. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, St. John's, Michigan, Jason, Rob Dowell. He says, uh, sorry, Lauren, but Y&R is his favorite. That's what my mom watched. I, I, I did watch some soap operas. So. <laughs> when I was younger. Now, so whenever right. I have horror guests on, a lot of times, you know, there's always, there's a lot of, a lot of horror people also did soap operas. So I, I, I can usually um, talk about it a little bit because, but, you know, I watch it with my mom yeah, a lot. I was uh, in, in an off-Broadway uh, play with Kevin Bacon. Oh, mm -hmm. nice. And it was after he filmed, yes, it was after he did Friday and after I did part two. Mm -hmm. And you know that we never talked about it because it wasn't a franchise yet. It was just like little horror movie that both of us did that were on shoestring budgets. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we never, we never talked about it. It's so weird. It's bizarre. Mm -hmm. Even years yeah. later when we would run into each other, it never came up. Bobby, Bobby Heckman. Um, he says, uh, and I, I wanted to ask this too. I, so, um, did Chris Nash talk about a sequel to *In a Violent Nature*? And if your character would come back, if there's a sequel, 
I'm definitely um, interested in this because I would love to see a sequel to this film. I, I'm I'm figuring. I I mean I would love it. Of course, I would love to be on board, even if I get killed first. Whatever. <laughs> I would love to be. That's the way the final girl usually board. works out. That's right. That's Adrian right. You're so. right. <laughs> and both of us, the other, the final, final girl and me, uh, he hasn't mentioned anything, and uh, there was never any talk about it when we were filming. No. No. Okay. The, one thing, busy. one thing I did like, and some people in the theater didn't, was the ending. I actually liked it. Loved it. Um, the yeah. whole like last like shot of you know he got the neck. You know, uh, I can't say, but that part it leaves it wide open for a sequel, yeah. but it leaves it to the point where it can just be left as is. It can way. be done too. Yes. yes. Either way. Yeah, I, yeah, either way. Yeah, I mean, I know a lot of the fans had problems with the pacing of it. Like, there wasn't enough stuff that was happening right away. It's like, it took too, too, too long to happen. But that was the whole thing about the movie, is that, you know, it is from Johnny's point of view. Mm -hmm. And it is his journey and his lifestyle, you know, after... I don't want to give anything away. Oh God, I'm start giving <laughs> away. But anyway, but but just to get that real feeling that you are in the woods, in the wild, and Chris Nash really wanted people to be totally immersed in the environment, and I think he did a great job. Very Steve, very proud of my young people. <laughs> my biggest thing with it, and I'll just you know, just real briefly, I still did recommend it when we reviewed it last week. I gave him my recommendation for people to go see it. Yeah. Um, my thing. It's just, I appreciate the new perspective, but when you always know where the killer is, I think it takes some tension away. That's just my thing. Huh, huh. Huh. You know, it's funny. I was thinking about that when I, I was watching something and it was showing the um, the, the face of the killer, all, or, you know, whatever the killer's warped face all the time. We were watching Terminator and I was like, what a different movie it would have been if it had been solely from... Um, Arnold's point of view, you know, or Robert Patrick's point of view and how mm -hmm. he's going after this person and you don't see him for a while, but you see with his prey. And I thought that would be kind of, you know, it, could it, be it's, cool. it is, it's a, it's a different perspective. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, actually the, the most tension in the film the, 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 was uh, when, when you were, you, you were on the film when you were on screen, because the whole time you're thinking, is she somehow connected to this killer? Is yeah. uh is the killer gonna catch up with them? Um, and when you stop to treat her leg, especially like I mean, uh, well, I should probably yeah okay whatever. Ah. I don't think I gave away too much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bad. We did a whole review of this movie without giving away anything, and, and right. I, was, I was so amazed because I'm we not will. good at that. I, I'm the worst at reviews. I, I even no. tell people we're gonna review this movie. Don't watch it if you haven't seen it because I suck. <laughs> no, once it once it hits shutter though, once it hits shutter then. Yeah. Speak freely yeah. about it. While it's still in theaters, though, we want people to go. That's and it is still in theaters. And speaking right. of yeah. which, you're our first guest to be on that has a film that's still in theaters. Is wow, that I feel fact? honored. That's a pretty cool. What's that? That's a I, fact. I feel honored. Yeah, that's a fact. Yeah, is it? I don't know. I, I can't think of anybody. I mean, <laughs> we had when we had um Christian on. He was in a movie that had just came out. But it was yes. it wasn't in theaters. It was on Shutter. Three, yeah, that's ah. true. destroy all neighbors. Yeah. And so yeah, when he th that that I think was the other most recent. Um, everybody else was like um, people from like Texas Chainsaw, Friday the Thirteenth, yeah, Nightmare yeah. on Elm Street. They've been you know out of the game for a while. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. I see that. Um, so you say you got forty five minutes. So you got about eight nine minutes, and we got to get you out of here. Okay. So um. I seen that your 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 you had a your family was in acting. I seen your dog was an actor. I was looking at IMDb. Yeah, it's the border collie. So um, my husband. Not the one you have now, is it? Yeah, it's one I have now. So Jack, oh, wow. my um uh, my English pointer mix that we, I mean, he came to our lives. He just walked into the bakery where my daughter was working at the time years ago, and uh, you know, I got a call from somebody that I knew and said. Yeah, and Lauren, you know, is your dog set friendly? I said, why? They said, well, they need a dog for, you know, this scene. I was like, ah, oh, well, let's see. He's the friendliest dog. So he was a regular <laughs> on Law and Order. In fact, I see one said to him, yo, Jack, my man. And I thought that was kind of cool. <laughs> and then um, when he passed away um, during COVID um, the following year, we got the Border Collie banjo. Mm -hmm. okay. And um, my husband's idea of his retirement was adopting a, a puppy. I was like, 
do you remember when we had the border college from North Shore Animal League all those years ago and just how ah, they are? So anyway, I trained him very, very well. And he started doing FBI Most Wanted and they basically watched him grow up. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's Ooh. been, that was very sweet. So yeah, that's what he, <laughs> he does that. Yeah. But Jack, he was on the center. He was on Prodigal Son, Almost Family. I mean, he was on in everything. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. That, so big, your dogs were big time. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. But he's good. He's that's good. that's awesome. Um, <laughs> hmm. So I also seen that you uh, you had um, dolls of yourself made up, uh, Vicky, and you have a the brown panty variant. <laughs> Listen, I didn't make those. Okay, so my friend Tom, who was in the one of the first ones in the conversation, he had them made, and oh, then that's... so what happened is the fellow who made it, um, I don't have his name offhand. Maybe Tom can plug it in for you there. Um, he had he made a couple for me too, and he sent those to me. But I did not commission those. Oh my god! I'm in the brown panties? No. I've seen I've seen them online. I've seen them. Yeah, I, I want to buy. I want to buy them. Yeah, I want they, one they, too. Then run into you at a con and get them signed. Yeah, that'd be pretty sweet. I have a few yeah, things from yeah. you already, but that would be I know. Pretty cool. Yeah, I do too. Like um, the the part two toy behind me is signed by her. I don't know if you can see it. Oh yeah, right next to the picture <laughs> of her. <laughs> I have a I have some really cool stuff. I have a 3D one of me that was printed out. I don't know if you can, if you can see Oh, that. yeah. We're freezing. All the way up there. All the way. Ah. Or at least on my side, we're freezing. But as long as you can see each yeah, other. All okay. the way up there. Oh, that's anyway. pretty cool. So. Welcome to my horror den. So <laughs> I, I have a confession to make. What? And Rick has the photo evidence. Yeah, for my your desk, desk at work, we're talking my about. My desk at work has one photo on it. <laughs> See if I can get this up here. Hopefully, <laughs> this doesn't freeze us. This is Ryan's desk at work. <laughs> it's a mess. Wait, I gotta see. Ah, oh, <laughs> I love it. Ah, oh, that's. And I actually, and I actually brought it home with me today, just in case. You can't really see it, but there it is. Oh, oh speaking of pictures, crazy. I got here I though. Love it. Here's one I wanted to ask you about. Is this the one? <laughs> how and oh when? What is God. the story here? What is going on here? Like, how did you meet Rerun? Um, what was, was that at, picture? I love Rerun. Um, I, that was at an appearance. Okay. I forgot where it was, but it was. You at guys look like you guys are going out on a date to a prom or something. It looked like a little. Oh no, you. no, we we do that a lot. I actually have um um a picture with the guy um with a bunch of the guys. Anyway, I have it somewhere. I have, yeah. anyway. Long story. Long story short. I always take pictures like that. I enjoy taking pictures like that. It's fun. That's why when I do the brown undie. Who who's the leather uh, face that's behind your head? Fun with it. Lauren. Uh that's uh, where? Right behind that's you. Brett Wagner. That's yeah. Brett. Is that Brett? Yeah, that's Okay, Brett. yeah, he is the best. Yeah, he's been Brett. on our show. He, yeah, he's we've like, had Brett on. He's great. We we love Brett. Yeah, he's cool. This here here's a uh a brown undie nice. moment with Lachlan Monroe and Chris. <laughs> That was in, uh, I think that was in Canada. Yeah, Frightmare in the Fall. That was a fun con. Yeah, he was, um, he was supposed to be at a con that we're doing, the Ohio Terror Con. Mm -hmm. And, um, I had it arranged because I hear he's a big, he's big into like tacos. And I was going to bring him these tacos yeah. from his taco spot and whatever, pick him up and just hang out with him. But then he got booked on a movie, which is awesome. Oh, that's but, cool. Um, before he got booked on the movie, though, or after he found out, before he got booked on the movie, he got us booked at this convention. So we're going to be doing a live um, a live podcast for that convention. So that's pretty cool. And he also found his own replacement and mm -hmm. got um, got uh, Bob Elmore to come and do the convention nice that we're doing. But we still so, got a leather face. Yeah, we still got a leather face. But, yeah, that's he is the nice. best. Brett, Brett is, the, like, the coolest, man. We, yeah, yeah our loving. tables were next to each other at the Nickel City Con in Buffalo. Cool. And uh, which is coming up again in a couple of weeks, but I'm not going to be. I'm not going to be there. Rick uh, and, that, yeah, he's cool. Rick and I have both. Oh, Thomas Chrissy gave us a link, and I'm imagining that this link is to buy our very own Vicky oh, Brown panties. Of course. Doll. <laughs> I'll definitely be clicking that after. Yeah, definitely. I want to get one of each. And then, <laughs> but no, Rick and I have both scored one date each from this show. He scored a taco date with Brett Wagner. I scored a pizza date with Melanie Kinnaman. 
<laughs> He's doing better than me. <laughs> yeah. That spooky. Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, we had we had Melody Kinnaman on a couple weeks ago. She she was great. But um, forty one, Ryan, man, you got any questions that we didn't get to that you really want to get to because we're we're, we're getting close. I do. Um, and I want to throw these out there because I always get into this with East Coast New York people. Um, favorite New York pizza? Oh, the original Rain's. Right. Okay. That's cool. The one downtown, the one down on uh, 15th Street and 6th Avenue. Okay. Why? Now, it's you're from the Bronx? Yep. Did you ever live in, in the city, though? I lived in the city mm, when I was doing Neighbors and Album off Broadway. So I lived in the city for um, East 84th Street for about two years. East 80, East. Yeah. Okay. okay. So the Bronx is yeah. not the city. This doesn't count. No, no. Well, it's one of the oh, five so boroughs. Know. Yeah. You know, it's. There's Manhattan, there's Staten Island, there's Queens, there's Brooklyn, yeah. the Bronx, and I grew up in the, the well, I, South. I, Bronx, I know all that, but I Bronx. thought it was yeah. all the city. No. When you say the city, it's, <laughs> it's not that. I don't know. No, See, he goes it's... up there like every year at least once, yeah. and he's been oh, well, there you for go. 25 yeah, Rick, years. That's why I get into the New York questions. Rick's a New York noob. I go there every year. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I've only heard it once. <laughs> yeah, born and raised. Born and raised. Nice, nice. Yeah, that's what him, him and Melanie Kinnaman were talking about because she was she's from there too, and they were talking. Well, about she's Dana. from she's from Massachusetts, but she moved to New York at like eighteen. Yeah, really young. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. And she. Well, I and mean, it's I was weird. taking subways when I was eight years old by myself. Yeah. You know, I mean, go Yankees, by the way. <laughs> Orioles. <Boo. stuff>. <laughs> <laughs> are you wearing yeah, an Orioles hat? Right. Wait, who are your who are your who's your baseball team? Oh, we're we're, we're in Cleveland. We're get at the Guardians, but Ryan's from Florida. Oh, that's right. They're I'm called from, the Guardians now. I knew, from the, I knew it was the Cleveland Indians, but yeah, yeah. I'm from Indians. Florida. Oh, okay. So you don't have any team that's any good. Tampa Bay Rays. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. You know the team oh Tom, uh, Thomas said go Baltimore. <laughs> the, the, team, the team that's uh, eliminated the Yankees from the playoffs the last three times they faced each other in the playoffs. <laughs> That's the reason I was in New York, guys. I went to the last series, the last series at Old Yankee Stadium, and they were building the new stadium. And I, I kind of broke in to the new stadium. Like I, I, I seen an opening, and I was like, "Don't ask for permission, ask for forgiveness." And I walked in. I walked around the whole thing before it was even open. Wow. And it was awesome. And when I got home, I went to the second to last game. When I got home, I seen people with a little chisel chiseling off pieces of the stadium. And I'm like, why didn't I think of that? I did oh, that. I, 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 st I took a patch of grass. And, I would have yeah. if I thought of it. Yeah. My dumb ass didn't think of it until I got home. But it was it was so <laughs> awesome. And um, I, I'm, I'm a Red Sox fan. Oh. You know? <laughs> oh. So <laughs> I didn't wear Red Sox gear. And they were playing the White Sox. So it was more about the history and everything. And – um. It was getting it was getting close. Or, you know, the Yankees were winning by like one or two, and they started to put a couple runners on base. And I'm like, I wanted to see Mariano Rivera, and you know, if it's not close, he won't come in. And I'm like, oh, you better not score. And they didn't. And I got to hear Inner Sandman, and the Yankees won, and um, Frank Sinatra playing, and yeah. the, the stadium reminded me of Old Brown Stadium, which was built about oh, the yeah. same time. And that's where the Indians used to play, and it had that same smell. And I just, I loved it. It was yeah. so awesome. Smells like yeah. you like your grandfather grandfather's closet with like old dirty baseball gloves in it. You know, that's it. That's <laughs> it. Wrigley <laughs> feels like that too. I saw Mickey Mantle play. Wow. Nice. <laughs> yeah. I'm Babe like Ruth trying to do this. Five hundred home run like, here okay, in Cleveland. It checks out. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we, we have we have a up. baseball museum um, where the Indians used to play League Park yeah, on yeah. the east Real, side. And this was run down. I'll send you some pictures of it later. But it was Real a quick. collapse and it was ready to just be gone. And so Real, much baseball history happened there. Like Real Babe Ruth's five hundred home run was there. What's we don't up? want to keep her. We don't want to keep her any longer. Yeah, I know so we do, gotta go. Do you have any uh, convention appearances coming up that you want to tell everybody about? Ask no, Tom. He'll tell you no. Not at the moment. No, no. Not right now. No. And not where right, can? Not right now. Where can our people follow you at? Just go to Instagram. It's just Lauren Marie Taylor one with the number one behind my name. If I have, if I have any conventions coming up, I'll I'll put it on Instagram, but I'll also put it on my website, which I have to update, which is just my name, Lauren Marie Taylor dot com. Right on. Yeah. All yeah, Tom says nope. 
All right, so we're going to get you out of here because 46 minutes and 25 seconds, we don't want your husband to get mad at us. No, but my, my husband already, he, he, he was did like the horror movie thing and he went, because I'm downstairs, and yeah. he went went into the wooded area outside this window, stuck his face in the screen and went, <laughs> honey, <laughs> honey. <laughs> All right. So thank you so much for taking the time yeah, for putting up through so these technical difficulties. We're going to have you on no, again maybe sometime when I got this internet thing fixed or something the next time you you know maybe when we do in a violent nature too <laughs> but, <laughs> or he knows when you're sleeping on the on my christmas movie that's coming oh, there you go that's movie. it yeah. we will we will definitely do that we'll do a christmas horror episode we'll have you on for that but um i'm gonna let you get out of here and thanks again for taking the time you're awesome and uh thanks thank you you're thanks our favorite much. not the final girl for sure <laughs> all right thank you thank you <laughs> no problem. I'm going to take you out of here, and then we're going to stay on for a couple minutes. Yeah. That was freaking amazing, wasn't it? Yeah, she's awesome. Even though even though all, all, all our pictures kept freezing up, and <laughs> my intro got screwed up. We never even introed any of us. Like We didn't need to intro her. Everybody knows who she, who she is. That's, that's the reason that's everybody's true. here. <laughs> See, and, I, and I have a confession to make uh, when, when that all started from the beginning like normal it never froze yeah. for me at all yeah i don't know went, bobby said it was looking good on his side too yeah, so i don't know yeah. maybe it was just me well um she had a, a hiccup at the beginning but again she says her internet's really poor up there in the yeah, middle she's of the in like the mountains of new yeah. york or something my um, internet uh um, here is very good so let's see we got uh karen all she she's she, Lauren can still hear us, I think, because she's still in the, the, the green room. So she says, Lauren, you're absolutely wonderful. Really enjoyed you on the pod. Um, Bobby Heckman said he had to get work to writing more of Victim No More. So all, all the best. Uh, let's see. We got anything else here while she's still in the green room and can hear us? No, nah, that should be. That pretty much covers it. Uh, Bill, Bill Wolf had a question for her, but we missed it. Uh, yeah. All right. So, ah, uh, she's sitting there her kitty. <laughs> she's still watching, so she can hear us. So, um, what else did we want to cover? Uh, do we want to talk about that movie a little bit? Or yeah, no? yeah, we okay. can do that. Uh, Ryan went to go see a movie the other day. New I did. Movie. I went and I saw The Watchers. The Watchers. And um, I posted on our page. I went and actually got me a nice plate of enchiladas first. I seen that. They, those look good. Where was that at? That was at El Campesino in Stowe. I've heard of it. Where, where, Solon? Yeah, th I think they got one in um, Bye Bye Cuyahoga Sister. Falls. Oh, okay. Stowe slash Cuyahoga. Stowe slash Cuyahoga Stowe. Falls. We call it okay. Stowe Falls. Yeah, my sister has one. Um, one of those, I think, down by her. Yeah, there's one in Kent as well. They're a chain, but they're a very small local chain, all owned by the same people. What the hell? Are we gonna hold on. Hold that thought about that film. Speaking of films, Bill Wolf. He says the wife is in a horror movie this weekend. It's called Psycho Chicken Killer Boy. It's going to be interesting. Wow. Yes, I seen her post about it earlier, and I was like, yeah, I can't wait to hear more about it. And now I am even more intrigued. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like it's going to be absolutely phenomenally awesomely bad. That, that sounds great. that like sounds like great. A JP Cross favorite. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, it's going to be right after the massacre. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. That is that is amazing. So that sounds really cool. So I went last Friday opening night. Um, saw the Watchers. It was directed by M. Night Shyamalan's daughter, whose first okay. name is, escapes me at this point. Um, Good enough. M. Night Shyamalan's daughter. We, we know yeah. who she is. But her middle name is also Knight, and her last name is Shyamalan. Yeah. Or is that, is that the last name, Knight Shyamalan? I don't know. Yes. <laughs> um, I yeah. knew when I seen the previews of it. I, I was like, this is an M. Night Shyamalan film. He's and then when it. I seen it was his, his her daughter, I was like, "Oh, makes sense." Yeah, he produced it. It's it's gateway horror. Mm -hmm. um, it's PG thirteen. There's a couple of, I guess, scenes that might push the boundary for R, but the rating system is a little different now with like some intensity and things like that. Mm -hmm. It's not overly gory. It's not 
overly vulgar or anything. So yeah, I could see the PG thirteen rating. I didn't. It didn't even occur to me though, like while watching it. Mm-hmm. I will say that this thing had a huge budget and it shows on screen. I recommend it. But like it's, it's are you a fan of M. Night Shyamalan in general though? I am not. Okay. I am not. I am for the most part not as well. I mean, mm-hmm. I haven't seen a lot of his stuff and a lot of it, like I don't really read, you know. Um, I I, the, I did like the one with Batista. I liked it a lot. A lot of people hated it. Which one is that one? Knock at the Cabin. Never saw it. it, it it's on um, something streaming for free. I, I it, tapped out. Not too I tapped out on him before that. <laughs> Yeah, this was so, relatively new, and um, wow, it was it was really good, man. It was my really good. my thing Batista was amazing. Oh, there they go. My right. thing with him <laughs> is a lot of his movies have lost so much money, but he still keeps getting money from studios to keep making them. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know the financials of it. Oh, he's had a lot of box office failures, man. Mm-hmm. A lot of them, you know, and and like, did he have any that were really? Any movies that were really like huge successes? Oh, well, Sixth Sense, his first one, made the show. Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah, I like that movie. Well, it is a good movie. Um, the only problem is there's no rewatchability to it. <laughs> you know, once you know the ending, why watch it again? Right on. You know, and that's the thing with a lot of his stuff, man. Once you know the twist or whatever, it's, just, it's his movies have no rewatchability. It's something you just go see at the theater, turn your brain off for two hours, and then forget about it. Right on. Yeah. yeah. And they don't really. I don't feel. I don't really feel like he has. Like uh, a real message in his films. He's just trying to shock you. Yeah, and I, I think this one, um, the one with Batista was a little bit different than that. I, I think you would like that. See, with me, the one that really got me, and I really liked the setup to it, and I just never wanted to see any of his stuff again, was The Village. Right on. I, I, I have not seen that. That's the one with Joaquin Phoenix. Um, it's older. I like it's Joaquin. Like, yeah, he, oh, he's a phenomenal actor. Yeah. Uh, and he's great in this, and I really liked the first act and most of the second, but it just fell apart to me. The twist, the twist in that one was just why. I don't know. So, but yeah, the watchers, I do recommend it. It's not like must see, mm-hmm. but if you're bored, I, I might go Friday, see it Sunday. I might go see yeah, it if Sunday. You're, if you're bored on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, is there, nothing- is there anything in there that I would think is inappropriate for children? No. All right. No. I might I might force my daughter to go watch a horror movie with me for Father's Day. Absolutely nothing sexual in it. That, that yeah, that's what I usually don't like. <laughs> and it's especially PG, it's, and it's sex PG-13. scenes are okay sometimes, yeah. most of the time, not even not for the kids. Like Ricky, Ricky just turns his head, he doesn't want to see him. Mm-hmm. But the girl, I, I don't want her to see him. And no. um Rape scenes, I won't let them see. No, that's, there's that's the worst. That's worse than any killing in any movie. Yeah. And Agreed. It's just horrible. Yeah, there's nothing Patricia like that Patricia Stevens says, hi, everybody. How you doing, Patricia? I think... Uh, Sorry, no, I missed kids? you while you were in Pittsburgh, Rick. Oh, yeah. I went there. Funny story about that. She was at Living Dead Weekend the day before I was there. I I, re- I seen somebody that looked a little bit like you, and I thought maybe you decided to come for the Sunday show. And I was like... You're not Patricia, are you? And she says, "No, no, I'm not. <laughs> no, I'm not." <laughs> Awkward. Yeah, but um, no, we we had a really good time. The Living Dead weekend. We're gonna go again next year. I'm gonna drag Ryan back with me because it. it, it I haven't been to a lot of cons, and this might be the first like big real con I went to, and it's still a small scale of what some of these cons can be. Yeah, and. uh it was so cool. Like it seemed like everybody kind of knew everybody. Nobody knew us, but they were meeting me. Um, the kids had really good time. We did the tour. We went to see Evan City Cemetery, and uh, that was great. Seeing where Night of the Living, I, I think Night of the Living Dead is one of the most iconic horror movies of all time. It's fantastic, and um, so so to see that, I had my choice to either go to that one or the 1990 cemetery, and I went to the older one. Because they were equal distance. It's funny because 
the, the 1990 where it was filmed is two hours from here. Uh, the 68 is two hours from here. Monroe Mall is two hours from here, but they're 45 minutes away from each other. Each other, yeah. It's like a big triangle. So I couldn't do all of them. And she says, my friend Beverly was working with Nicotero. She works with him every time he's here. I I really wanted to see Nicotero, but he wasn't there on Sunday. Yeah. I was trying to get um to get Nicotero and Burger to sign something, and then I'm doing a thing with uh with um Kurtzman later. He's doing a dinner thing. I don't know what to, for his artwork. It sounds like kind of fancy and high class, but I'm gonna probably go check that out um and get him to sign as well. Ryan, you you disappeared, man. Are you still there? We don't know. We might have lost Ryan. We may have lost Ryan. His screen's black, but it looks like he's still there. I don't know what's going on, but we will wait and see. Greg wasn't feeling well. He just had surgery recently on his back. Maybe that's why he didn't stay for Sunday. Monroeville Mall is 25 minutes from your house. Yeah, that's great. I love it. I love Monroe. I had such a good time there, man. Um, we took pictures of – oh, there he is. He's back. He's back. What happened? Battery die? No, I can't hear shit. Can you hear me now? We can see you now. He says, one second. And he's gone again. So we will talk amongst ourselves, and Ryan will come back in in just a minute, I am sure. All right. So, yeah, so we did the Monroeville Mall thing. We did the tour of the mall, which you could go by yourself and check everything out. But the tour guide, Lawrence, whose last name escapes me, who... He, he knows that film inside and out so well that uh, it's worth it to take the tour with, with him because he just has all this knowledge. And was, you're also able to get into some places where you can't get into by yourself. You're back. Can we yeah, it was, really, it was really weird. My phone rang and I hit the thing, the F-U button to like. Oh, yeah. Away, and it just made me mute. It was weird. I couldn't hear you. Nothing. <laughs> that was weird. Yeah. Now I know not. That's to Okay. Talk. I freestyled. I just kept going about the about the con. Um, Lawrence is a great guy. He has quite a collection too. Yeah, here and he he was really nice, man. And um, he really did a good job with that tour. And like, I don't think there's just from my experience with him for like that hour. I don't think anybody knows Romero like this guy knows Romero. So <laughs> he's like zigzag with Fulci, but with Romero. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of zigzag and Fulci, and I had this on. I wanted to bring this up when I had Lauren on. The shirt, I don't know, she's still there, but she's not looking at the camera, so she can't see. Maybe she'll watch back later. But this is from the Angelo Mariano collection that you can get one of these, your own to part two, Friday the 13th shirt that um, he painted and they applied to a T-shirt. And you can get that at DeathCurseSociety.com, and it's awesome. And they're, they got a new one coming out real soon from his collection. But, yeah, I, for, I forgot to spit out that factoid about her husband, too, when she was I, I tried to... Give you the any a couple times. Mm. That's like when I did the family dog thing. That yeah, was, I, yeah, I don't really get into the family stuff, but she brought him up. So then I was going to like segue into it. But there was another time. Yeah, it's yeah. okay. Yeah, maybe we'll have her on again. Uh, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure we, we, we will um, with better awesome. internet. <laughs> she says, um, I grew up knowing John Russo. He's a member of the American Legion. My dad used to hang out with him at the bar. Absolutely awesome. So real, real quick, was, though, before. Before I totally lose the plot on this, um, yeah, knowing you, your family, everything, I think the Watchers would probably be best for just a Daddy and Michaela night. I think so too. That and I was thinking because there's probably not enough people getting slashed into pieces for Ricky. I think, to, yeah, he'll, I he'll think, get bored. I don't think Ricky could get into. And it. I think it's probably deep enough where it'll hold her interest. It seems like, and it makes sense because a young girl directed it. Mm. You know, and I. It, Everybody's into what they're into, but it seems like girls would like this movie more than guys. Right. Uh, I know I watched the movie with a female, and she enjoyed it much more than I did. Okay, so. awesome. Yeah, we're, I think we're gonna go check that out on Sunday. I'm pretty sure yeah. that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull. The, it's Father's Day. You, you have to go to this movie with me, card. And she, she cannot say no because. No. <laughs> on this I think. Today, she, <laughs> I think she'll like it. No one hurt. I think so I too. Yeah. Day. I think so too. And then what, me and her, me and her, will do a quick review of it on um on the YouTube maybe if if we end up doing it. Oh, I'll watch that. Yeah, yeah. The, we did a, we did a one before. It's pretty cool. Um, 
Go also going back to Lauren. See, I, I forgot to put the ticker in the beginning, and then when I did put it on, it almost crashed the computer. But um, if you looked at the ticker, Lauren was in a movie that we didn't get to really bring up. I think it, we very briefly brought it up, called um, Pretty Face, which is part of an anthology film, um, All Hallows Eve. Not the one with Art the Clown, though, but they were the people that brought out Art the Clown. And this was called All Hallows Eve um, Trickster, and it's free on Tubi. And uh, I can't wait till they actually sponsor us so I could say, Every time, every time I say it to me, I can say, because they pay me every time I do. <laughs> I saw I saw a commercial for Tubi on, like, TV TV recently. Nice. I haven't yeah. watched TV TV in years. <laughs> Neither do I. I think I was watching a game. That, you know what? I was, too, and that's where I seen it, too. I was watching the hockey game yesterday, and it came on there. It but, wasn't um, that. It was something. I think I was watching a, a NBA Finals game the other day. Well, yeah, Tubi is absolutely the best. But um, All Hallows Eve, uh, Trickster, and his movie is one of the short films in it. And he's going to come on with us on a special edition. I haven't even told Ryan about this, so hopefully Ryan can make time for this. Uh -oh. This is going to be on a Tuesday at 7. Mm, okay. A Tuesday at 7 because um, he he works at his day job while we are on. And he was um, – I'm waiting. I'm, I'm trying to stall for the ticker to go by so I can get the guy's name. I see it. Francesco something. Francesco D, D what? DePinto. DePinto. I am almost positive that's it, but he was the director of the film, wrote the film. It's a it's a short that's part of an anthology. And um, I, I, I want to say he was the killer in the film from the director. So, there it is. Francesco DePinto. De yes. Mm -hmm. Good job, Ryan. We're going to, as part of um, Pride Month, we're going to, we're going to have him on to celebrate Pride Month and talk about his great film. Which is part of the anthology film All Hallows Eve. So it's a special day, but is it a special time? Is it still going to be seven? It's still going to be seven. Oh, I can make it. Okay, cool. And um, you know, we're 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 going to have him on, and I, we'll, we'll talk about all kinds of cool stuff, including this film, and hopefully, um, there's plans in the work of a feature based on this film. But it, it is like it has all these really cool little Easter eggs for old school horror movies. I mean, the guy is definitely. A slasher expert, you could tell, and the way the well, film is laid out, the killer is amazing. The effects are great. Uh, it, oh, it's so a, June June twenty fifth, not this coming Tuesday, the one after. Not this coming Tuesday, June twenty fifth. Gotcha. I may have said that wrong. Got it. I, and I did that. I he probably could have came on this Tuesday, but I wanted to give it time. Yeah. Give me at least you know more time to do my research and get questions mm -hmm. ready and stuff. And let our and, um, do, and let our watchers and our viewers and our listeners all check it out too before then. Yeah, absolutely, because it is free. Yeah. It's totally worth it. It's um the first or second section. It's about fifteen minutes into the film, but before we went on, I was watching the entire film, and it looks like it's definitely worth the watch. I mean, I'll watch it. I'll watch you know, the whole thing. Yeah, you'll like it better than you did the first one. I guarantee you that. No, that's not saying much. But but he does uh. He does have some gore similar to art, but n n not in the same style as art. It's not torture, mm -hmm. but it's gory. Like, the, the guts get ripped out and shit like that. He, now, it's not like... It's different. You'll, you'll see what I mean when you see it. You'll like you'll like this better than that, I guarantee it. So next week, is it going to be this? Yeah, we're going to do part two next week. We're going to finally get the two. We, were gonna, we had that as a backup plan for tonight. Right. I heard tire. I don't know what you're talking about, Patricia. Well, damn, man. Lauren Marie's going to get mentioned again next week. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, whatever. Three weeks good. in a row. She, she's, getting her, <laughs> she, she's getting her shit in. Yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> well, we were supposed to have Brian Emanizer on with us tonight from um, the Horror Shed podcast. We were supposed to have him on last week to do this whole funny bit, the bait and switch thing where I was going to introduce him because – we met him the same time we met Lauren, and it's same a two-year anniversary of meeting him, and blah, this, and they, they're both in a Friday uh, film based on Sackhead Jason, and all this cool stuff, but the he didn't show, we could get her, and then it would have been so funny. I think it would have been he, great. The, the, see if, how these, you see everybody how these people do me. They try to play tricks on me. Yeah. Because, so. <laughs> of course, Ryan was in the dark about who's going to be there. I'll get something <laughs> for that ass, you playing tricks on me. <laughs> 
And then this week we were just, I, I was going to try to talk him in. I was about to send him a text like, can you dress in a part two cosplay since it's Jason's birthday and we have Lauren on. <laughs> but that's when he hit me up and he, uh, he had a, a medical thing he had to take care of. So um, he had a procedure that he had just gotten word that they were open at 730 and it was like either do this now or put it off even longer. See, um, now I'm glad I didn't call him superstar and a big timer for canceling. <laughs> <laughs> no, he still is. No, <laughs> no, no he, we're, we're hoping that everything went, went good with that. And, you know, that, you know, your health is important. You got to take care of that first. Dude, so that way, you know, for we'll, sure. But I think I got learned Marie Taylor's autograph like three times. I got no Brian Emanizer. No Brian Emanizer. Can't happen. <laughs> Can't happen. <laughs> Maybe he just doesn't know how to write, and that's what that's what it really is. He's not really big time enough. He doesn't know how to write his name. <laughs> no, I'm gonna tell him it's okay, man. Just put an X next time. We'll, we'll be okay with that. Oh, the shoeless Joe Jackson signature. Just the... yeah, yeah, we're good with that. <laughs> or, or, or Roger Maris in '62, the movie '62. '61, but '61. Yeah, it's not '62. <laughs> '61 asterisk six... is the name of the he movie. Hit, he hit six, 61 home runs in, in 1961. In 1961. Yeah, I, I know that. I don't know why I said 62. Yep, 61 but, um, and 61. He handed him the ball and said, just put your X on it, Roger. And Roger did it. <laughs> That's a joke. And, uh, guy the was Shoeless Joe Jackson one's so funny, too, when he just put the X on the ball. And remember, the reporters were uh, heckling him because he couldn't read or write. Mm-hmm. They're just like, they're like, Joe, can you spell cat? Can you spell cat? <laughs> and they're all <laughs> laughing at me. He goes, hey, mister. Huh? He goes, can you spell shit? <laughs> <laughs> I did. Patricia says, uh, "Did I get to see the guy that dressed up as Flyboy from Dawn of the Dead? He he was great. He was so good that Ricky thought it was Flyboy, and I had to break the bad news to him that Flyboy passed. But he he, he looks really good. Um, yeah, he was like, Dad, that's a uh, Flyboy from the movie, and I said, No, no, it's not. But he looks just like him." Yeah, he does a real good cosplay. Um, I, I wanted to get there on Saturday Did you uh, the, for the fluffy cosplay. There's video of it around. I'll try to get it to you. This guy gets in a crate, and he's got the whole fluffy deal. He wheel, people wheel him around the whole con. He, he does it all the time. It's amazing cosplay. It's one of the best I've ever seen. The the, the guy has been on um the, the podcast that shall not be named a few times, so he's friends with that guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, we're not going to hold that against him, I guess. Oh, she says he lives in England. Nice. The Flyboy cosplayer. Yeah, there wasn't a whole lot of cosplayers when I was there. He was, he was there, and that was the only one. And he actually had a booth. Oh, you know what? Also, I, I ran into, um. oh, my God, his name escapes me. His name's Chris something. He's the owner of the – you met him before. He's the owner of the, the Silence of the Lambs house. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we talked about the – Pennsylvania event. We were talking about that a little bit. And oh, the wants- Buffalo Bills house. Buffalo Bills house. Yeah. What did I say? The Silence of the Lambs house. Same thing. Yeah. But um, he's got he's he wants us to come down and check that out, and uh, they're going to do a day tour there. He's going to come on the podcast to talk mm-hmm. about Silence of the Lambs and talk about that, and we get all that worked out. And we're going. He lives closer to the 1990 cemetery, so mm-hmm. I figured we could take a road trip, check that out, I'm into go, to, it. go to Buffalo Bills house, and. You know, they, they, it is an Airbnb. I don't know. It, it's it's a little easier to get into in the off season. Maybe we'll look into that for then. We'll take a little roadie. But um, before that, we're going to go and check out the cemetery, talk to him, see the house, and we'll have him on the podcast right about that same time. Maybe even do some live stuff with him there. But, It'd be cool uh, that to do one cool from season. there. To do it from there. Yeah. Yeah. We might be able to do that. I don't know, yeah. you know what kind of Pennsylvania internet he has, but <laughs> – <laughs> you got it running an Airbnb. You got to have something going on there. Yeah, something, yeah. In this day and age, <laughs> the kids can't play on their phones. It's over with. One star. <laughs> Rob asks if either one of us has met Tom Matthews. I have, I have not. not. No. And I see that you're going to be meeting him in, in Las Vegas. I do have a signature. I have a signature on a uh, a movie mold um, uh uh, Never Hike Alone mask with uh, Vincent DeSanti and the mask maker that made the mask for the movie on there. But yeah, uh, uh, Patricia said she's met him and she's a great guy. But yeah, yeah. No, no, Tom, Tom, I'm sure Tom's great. Tom, Tom, Tom's it, awesome. It seems like all those part six guys are really cool. CJ's cool. McLaughlin's really cool. 
Yeah. I've heard Tom Matthews is cool. Darcy's really cool. I, I, I got a, I got a, a message in the McLaughlin about being on the show. I think we can get him to do it, but the problem is, is I, I only have his Facebook contact, mm-hmm. and I don't think he even looks at it because it's still he hasn't read it. Yeah. So we'll get somebody that knows him. Knows him. I was really hoping Lauren was going to come through for me with the Ellen Luter. Like, you know what? I do got her email address. Like, or See, something, you know? Yeah, you didn't even know how deep I looked into that for you. I man. appreciate that, man. That would have that been the greatest birthday present in history. Yeah, she does work for Sandler's company now, so. Right? Well, that, that, that lets me know a couple ways I might be able to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, I tried. You know, I, just, just... I don't have any path to any of those guys, so. <laughs> They're all, they are all actual big, real big stars. Not like, you know, us joking around. <laughs> I, I, I seen somebody recently and I can't remember who it was, but it's somebody that's not that big. That's knows Adam pretty mm-hmm. well. And I'll, I'll have to try to figure it out. It's See, like, yeah, we're, we don't even want like, <laughs> we don't even it's want somebody Adam, that like, worked on little Nikki. We just somebody that get, worked on little yeah. Nikki. Like we don't even want it in with Adam. We just want to get a hold of his like costume <laughs> set designer. Yeah, yeah, we know. <laughs> yeah, Adam Sandler Schmandler. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The best I could do, I, I did find a recent ish photo of her, which yeah. actually was pretty fucking hard to do. Yeah. Oh yeah, um, I can't find anything on her. I did. No, uh, no, no socials or nothing. Yeah, I found a little bit, but uh, it was. Is still a dead end in the end, you know, because yeah, she's that, that'd be like the the grail Jason autograph, man. Because she's I don't not no soul that has it. She's not. People have Brooker. Yeah, you know. <laughs> well, she's not the youngest person either now, so she probably doesn't yeah. do the socials, you know. Yeah, right. Which doesn't surprise me, and she was never a star, so she doesn't have representation. Yeah. Because I tried to go that route too. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah, I I, I tried too. One day, one day, we will get that done. We will get that done. But, um, oh, we're at an hour and 13, so we went short with our interview, but then we went long with our BS at the end, <laughs> which is okay. But, um, yeah, so we had, the, we had the Friday the 13th 2 review as a kind of a backup plan for tonight if um, everything fell through. And it didn't fall through, thank God. It was wonderful, and it was a great, great time talking to Lauren. Definitely. We are going to do that next week, Friday the 13th Part 2, and then we only have one more after that. And then we will um, we have that one. We have that one next. Yes. And then we will move into, um, we, we're, we're probably going to do Halloween after that. So we could, that way we'll be close to done with them on Halloween after we do our <laughs> ranking episode of Friday the 13th. Mm-hmm. So that's the big one. We'll, we'll all kinds of fun out. stuff coming up. Yeah. We'll have to schedule that one in advance. And Mr. Big Shot. Left yeah, he got to be here for that one. <laughs> I'm gonna have to let him know far enough in advance. Yeah. Keep your keep weddings, medical appointments, all of this stuff off the calendar for this day, man. We need you. We need South Jersey Jason. Yeah, we had Jared Haggerty for the nightmare, so we got to have Eminizer for the Friday. Rebecca, Rebecca says you should show your coasters that her sister gave you. Are those close? Oh yeah. Okay. I guess we won't cut out. We'll, we'll wait and see Ryan's coasters that he received because it sounds like a pretty cool thing. See, this camera isn't that great, but um, her sister Brandy, thank you, Brandy, if you're out there, hooked me up with these. There's a little ghost. Oh, thing wow. Still. That looks really cool. I like the way they use the negative space to make the mask. Pennywise, actually. Cool. Pennywise. Got, ooh. It's for Jared Haggerty. Oh, yeah, he would, he would dig that for sure. You got a Freddy. Save that one. There we go. Speaking of Halloween. That's a very, very good Michael. That, yeah. that looks really sweet. The shape. The shape. Oh, nice, Chucky. Well, Charles Lee <laughs> Ray. And there's one more. I, I knew that one would have to be Jason, right? I had to save this one for last. Dude, that is awesome. Those are pretty sweet, man. I, I and it's dig. like this. It's They're like jeweled. It's pretty cool. Yeah, dude. A lot, a lot of them work goes in. Paint by diamonds. Mm-hmm. That's exactly those. right. That's exactly what that is. I forgot the name of it. Uh, but yeah, next time uh, I come to your spot, I'll, sh- I'll show them to you like live. Nice. They're very cool. All right. And she even has, or, or maybe I'll maybe I'll come down there because you said you do have a decent Indian food spot down there. I right? do. And you have to go check that out. 
and Ty, a very good Ty spot. I think that's what we were talking about, Ty. But I, I like the magnets on the back, so you can like display them. It's pretty cool. Oh hell yeah, dude! I need to get a board for magnets, something for magnets. Um, Adam gave me this this really cool Lost Boys magnet mm -hmm. that, that, that from this art gallery you went to. The guy painted it, and I have a couple other like I have a Chris Lake magnet and a couple others, and I, I need like a, a magnet thing, and then like I have a couple of them little pins, horror pins. I need to get like something to display these pins on as well. Yeah, I found the perfect thing to put on this coaster, just for you know future reference. So. Oh, okay. You know. <laughs> yes. The, the the hourglass. Yes. You get a stay of execution this week, but it's lurking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I was gonna suggest? I was gonna suggest that we. It would have been a cool idea. Is um a sixty second, the watcher review, and you use that for it. I thought about that, and I also, if I had more loaded up... Was You'd have to have like, it prepared, yeah. I would have to let you know in advance. That, and also Lauren wouldn't know the, the thing, but I thought about doing... Oh, like no, not six, during the interview. Eh? No, 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 no. I thought about another thing, about doing a 60-second, like, rapid fire, like, lightning around New York City questions to her, but she wouldn't yeah, have known, we were, she wouldn't have known the time. We had to get her out of here for, right. for her husband, got mad at her. We didn't want that, because then he ain't going to let her come on with us again. No. Oh, like Patricia you're, says you're banned does, from talking to those guys from Cleveland. <laughs> Patricia says, "Does um, does your the, 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 does whoever made those for you? Did do they sell them online? Not that I know of, but I can talk to her tomorrow about getting more of them. And that's what Rebecca says. She said I can ask her and send me a message. There you go. All right, there you go. Yeah, that would be sweet. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'd probably get a set of those for sure." She had other stuff too besides these little coasters, but oh, uh, it, it seemed a little bit more involved. Mm. But they were very cool. I actually did. John McNeil says, "Where can I rewatch this?" I'm sorry, Ryan. I do my thing, uh, interrupting you, but uh, he missed it. But we we were we we're going to put it out on audio um, by tomorrow sometime. It'll be on iTunes. Um, it'll be on YouTube and Facebook. You could just go to our pages and watch it there under the live video thing. Yeah. We started up. We, oh, you made her figures. Oh, nice. John said I made her figures. We're going to, um, uh, if you could shoot me a message on, on Facebook and let me know what those are running, I would like to acquire some of those from you. Me too. But uh, if you could do that. But nevertheless, um, Facebook and YouTube. You can watch the video again. In the beginning, we were having all kinds of technical difficulties. Uh, but the interview went great, and I, I think you'll dig it. And, you know, I, I technical difficulties aside, I think it worked out. Um, yeah, so check it out and check our other stuff out. We, we have our co-star and director of Pretty Face coming on June, June 25th, so I'll, also check that out. And just follow the page, man, see what else we got coming up. But we have been going for an hour and 20 minutes. I got to go to work <laughs> and make some money. Get this. I'll get this up, and it'll be on iTunes. Ryan, you got anything else you want to add today? Yeah. Um, check out The Watcher. It's pretty cool. Uh, big thanks again to Lauren Marie Taylor for coming on. That's been, you know, when we first started this thing. That's She was the, the first, first name that came up. We got to yeah, get her on. one of the very first names that we both brought up, and it's happened now. And, man, Rick's been booking us some bangers. I need to get off my ass and uh, <laughs> bring some heat to this show. Um mm. Sorry, I didn't use it this week for those of you that did ask, but there's plenty of other time. And uh, with that, there goes the neighborhood. <laughs>